Just to add to the whole wealth thing, there's a thing called the black card. Basically, you have to be invited. What happens? You have to be invited to have this card, and it's like a titanium card. It's like pretty. Yeah, it's like the it's like the black card that Jay Z raps about. I remember the first time I saw one. Yeah, I was like 25 years old, and I was in New York City, and I was having dinner with some fancy people, and like I just saw it like land on the table, and I was like. I didn't even know they were real. I thought they were like unicorns, mm. leprechauns, and the Amex black card. <laughs> it, and then like I saw it and I was like really embarrassed. And like, I asked my friend, I was like, can I, can I ask him if I can touch that? Mm. <laughs> and, and it's like this heavy weapon. Yeah, it's very heavy. credit card. Yeah. And there's no way to like apply for it or get it. Yeah. And, and you were lucky to get invited to... To have one. And how did it, like, what was the packaging it came in when it arrived at your door? <laughs> the only reason why I have one is a friend of mine's, like, friends with the head of Amex and, like, hooked it up for me. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, Okay, but when it comes, it comes in a box that's enormous, like, huge. <laughs> how big? You know, it's probably, like, it's, like, two shoe boxes. Wow. For a credit card. For a credit card. And then a human being delivers it to you. My first one, a human delivered it. Wow. He was, like, Mr. Neistat. And I was, like, yeah. And he's, like, I'm here with your Centurion card. And I was like, are you a courier? And he's like, I work for American Express. And I was like, head We're going to need a sample of your blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and what are the perks with it? You were, you were listing some perks off. There's some pretty silly perks. But if you travel a lot, it's like you can definitely get benefits. But it's like when you check into a hotel, they immediately give you like one of the best rooms they have, even if you pay for it. They upgrade cheaper. you. Immediately, like two upgrades, two levels of upgrade. Like guarantee you instead of having to check out at eleven a.m., like check out at four p.m. So you get like an extra half day in your hotel room. That's fucked. With hotel or with airplanes, like if you oh. buy one business class ticket, you get one for free. What? Isn't there an um, Amex card too, where it's like I I want uh, an AK forty seven and a, yeah. a bucket of chicken wings, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they'll bring you, it like you right just call now. Call the concierge. And they'll do is that the black card? And, yeah. and they'll bring it to your hotel room. Yeah, whatever you need, they'll do anything for you. Like it also comes with. Um, Something called helicopter. This is so silly. Helicopter evacuation insurance. So if you're in a foreign country or somewhere where you can't get good medical care, they'll just send a helicopter in to pick you up and fly you to a near city to, where you can get the medical care you need. And that's like a free. That's like. Hey, guys. My name's Jeff. Big fan of the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are talking about the, the black card. And one time I was actually, this is uh, prior to the Vlog Squad days, I was at a party. I was going into a, a club in Vegas. You know how the pool parties, they get just mobbed. So yeah. it was really hard to get into. And this guy, he dropped his black card on the floor, like in front of the hostess, because you couldn't even get their attention to get like a table reservation. And this guy just drops it out and he's like, whoops. And you just saw the black card fall on the floor. And then it, it worked. His plan worked. He got everybody's attention and they oh, got wow. him in. From the black card, the power of the black card. Just, just from flinging it on the floor and be going, whoops. Because you have to like, the, uh, to, uh, to get the black card other than, you, I mean, you know somebody, but you have to be spending like... What is it, like a million dollars a year? It's something insane. What is it, Dima? So uh, I looked it up. So you have to have an Amex card for a year. You have to spend four hundred to six hundred fifty thousand, just in general. My ex-wife can apply for it. Yeah. And you have to have a million income, grossly. How year. many Instagram followers? <laughs> it says uh, you need fifteen thousand. Uh, I'm good. I actually have a VIP card at one of my banks that I go to, and uh, I get a dollar off every product that has lasagna in it. Oh, it's kind of like an Amex Black. Yeah, it's similar. But just for pasta? No, just anything that has lasagna. Not well, all pasta, only lasagna. Oh, Dima, this isn't time to brag. Yeah, but I just <laughs> wanted to feel like I was part of the group. <laughs> I would bet that if we could go into the underbelly of Amex that I'm the poorest person. Yeah, to Casey have told to me about out. Amex and he called. Uh, and I, I got so jealous. I'm like, Casey, call him right now. Call that number on the back of your phone and see if I can get it. And they're like, oh, we don't know if we can do this, sir. They just and Casey was hyping me up. <laughs> Casey was like, like, Dude, it's a big deal. His Casey videos was like, are really I, funny. Casey was like, I'm sitting next to one of the most popular humans on the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking. This is the, the most interesting thing about YouTubers is they're, I say this all the time, they're the most relevant, irrelevant people in the world. That's true. There's not a, per there's not a person or group of people that are so loved by so many people but also completely unknown to others nope you're like exactly no one, right no one has a stronger love for a person than than people that watch youtubers but then the rest of the world's kind of just like confused about them like that time in miami when we were trying to get in the club and <laughs> i told the guy this guy yeah. was like this party's been here 15 years puff daddy comes here and i was like well this is David Dobrik. I showed his Instagram. I was like, look, you Dude, know, verified. What, 10 what Jeff did that? I got so fucking embarrassed. I was embarrassed, embarrassed of it, but it's a different town. It's not LA. It's like, you know, sometimes Dude, you have to show Jeff these things. when Jeff did that, I literally grabbed Natalie by the arm and I go, did he just fucking do what I think he did? 
<laughs> okay, but I only did it because he told me Puff Daddy. Now, Puff Daddy, huge star. But, you know, you guys, P. Diddy, you may know him as. But you look at his Instagram, he's only getting maybe. I know I hate that. Like, going to the likes. No, listen, listen. But- I didn't I didn't hear him saying this. I didn't hear him, like, hyping me up. All I saw was I'm like, okay, Jeff's talking to the bouncer. Maybe he'll handle it because he's from Miami, so maybe I'll talk to him. <laughs> I could have showed my own Instagram. I'm doing pretty okay. But he said P. Diddy, and he compared him to you. <laughs> and he's P. Diddy is not as relevant as you right now. Nowhere near. He, yeah, sure. he ran the fucking marathon, and he's built all that stuff a while ago. But that's the last stuff he really did. He's yeah, in his fifties now. But it's just a completely different thing. You, t- me, and P. Diddy are completely different people. Like Insta- you're right. He would have got. He would have paid for the table. Yeah. He wouldn't have tried to sneak <laughs> in. We're over Instagram. there trying to just fucking sneak in with. And, and he has and a granted, black card. He could have used that. Granted, when we go into clubs, we, we roll thirty guys deep, like at least. Yeah, yeah. like it, a it's, lot of dudes. It's thirty and dudes me. and Natalie <laughs> and Jason. <laughs> thirty dudes and Natalie. I'm the hard sell. Yeah. Natalie gets in no problem. I got so scared when when Jeff whipped out his Instagram. I was like. I was like, he's fucking, remember, Jason, you were there, right? Yeah. I was like, that guy's reckless. He's reckless. <laughs> and Jeff's like, I, I, Jason was like, yeah, I mean, that's how Jeff is sometimes. Like, you know, he's still got the Miami in him. And I was like, <laughs> I was so terrified. Like, I hate, dude, I hate when I'm standing like at a party and I can't get in. And it's so crazy because you can tell how much people love YouTubers because I'll be standing outside a party. One kid will walk up to me and be like, you can't get in? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? You can't get into this party? What? Do they not know who you fucking are? And I literally have to go, I'll go, dude, please come down. Like you're, <laughs> you're, you're the only one here that feels like this. Like I, I promise you. <laughs> and then, and then you'll, and then you'll always have that guy like be like, dude, no worries. I got you. And he'll walk up to the bouncer and he'll be like, that guy right there. Do you know who he is? Yeah. The bouncer will look at me and he'll go, no. <laughs> and then the guy will be like, that's David Dobrik. <laughs> He's one of the biggest YouTubers right now. <laughs> and the bouncer will be like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I've I'm, seen that happen. Yeah, and then I'm never allowed wherever we are. That is, but that is like the scariest moment. Yeah. And every time we go to a party and someone like starts screaming, like, "Oh, it's David over!" I have to go. Please, 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 be quiet. You're gonna ruin my chances of getting in. <laughs> yeah. Or just, just like, let me just try to just sneak in behind somebody because yeah. it's so tricky. In fairness, the reality of what you're the crew, what we're all like, or you guys are all like, it's like. Eight bros standing outside. We're the worst dressed anywhere. All I think is that strip club we were at in Miami where yeah. it's like filled with the most beautiful dancers, like dudes all wearing suits. And then there's eight of us surrounded by a guy who has no socks on and he's showing us his six toes. We are the worst dressed. That's the for The most sure. exciting thing in that club were the six toes. We're just staring at some <laughs> dude's fucking foot. And from SeatGeek, you know, that's a lot like Tom from MySpace. I think you're the new Tom from MySpace. David has made me a little mini celebrity, which I appreciate. I see those likes on your tweets. Yeah, Ian, I love the likes. Like I, it's really. Sad Ian has how changed much his I name like on them. Twitter from from just Ian to Ian from Sea Geek. Do you right? know Ian's yeah. last name, David? Yeah, is it? Does it start with an S? No. no. Oh. A B. Oh, my God. A B. oh but Boswick. <laughs> Do you know Borthwick. Natalie's last Borthwick. name? Borthwick. But it's really Ian from Sea Geek. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm fully. Do leaving. you know Ian's last name? Yeah, Sea Geek. <laughs> <laughs> from Sea Geek. Do you know Natalie's last name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what is it, Dave? Dobrik? LLC. <laughs> Dobrik LLC. <laughs> um, Natalie, get me Chipotle. <laughs> Natalie, get me Chipotle. Uh, Dobrik. <laughs> um, no. Um, well, Ian, we've been working with you for a while. The one question I have is why do you never give us the numbers for how many downloads the or how many times my promo code has been used? I want to put you on the spot. Yeah. If I told you those numbers, you'd ask me for too much money. I knew it. I fucking <laughs> knew it. I knew it. I mean, it's like Netflix is never going to give the people on Netflix their numbers. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give you your numbers. Guys, we're having a serious, we're like, we're having a meeting right now with Ian. I, yeah. I think Ian needs to pay me more money. Natalie, what do you think? I would also agree Ian needs to fork up the cash. Yeah. and and How many cars have we bought you? Ian, none of those are for me. How much the Ferrari you, wasn't for you? How much have you? Okay, come on. Low blow, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, no, I think I think we need to figure out a a way to expand the budget, but I okay. feel like you're a little bit nervous. I don't know what it is. And, and I think the best way to negotiate is on the podcast right now, live in front of millions of people. I mean, I know how you perform, yeah. Yeah, and you, you can't tell me any sort of numbers on how many codes are used, like, monthly. Ballpark it for me? It's enough to buy you 14 cars at this point. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I think it's 14 cars and then some, maybe another 14, 14. cars. Listen, 
the 2020 deal is going to be big. <laughs> His voice has naive. totally changed. <laughs> wow. I literally, on the way here, Greg, who is also here from SeatGeek, I told Greg that uh, the last thing I want to do is do a face-to-face negotiation with David. I didn't think it would happen on the podcast. <laughs> I really didn't see that coming. Um, I mean, I was like, Greg, the one thing we have to steer David away is the 2020 deal. Because one thing about David is he's the worst person to negotiate on the phone or in person because... You just want to give him all the money, <laughs> but then you also have like the facts that you can't give him all the money. Sure. How was it the first time we met? Remember when we had that, remember when we first like met in person and we had a talk yep. about how the brand deals were to go. Do you remember that? Yeah. You walked up to me and you pulled up, we were in the middle of a party. We're in the middle of this like weird after party to something and you pulled two chairs up and you sat me down and you had a face to face with me and you were like, how are we going to make this happen? I need exactly this much money. And I need it now. <laughs> An unnamed other brand didn't do it. SeatGeek did. Yeah. So remember that in your 2020 deal. SeatGeek was there <laughs> from you since before the cars, since before yeah, the, so the Nickelodeon first, Awards. The first time I really talked to Ian about like a, a, a big deal, there was another brand sitting right next to him. And I, and I, had, them, I had them both sit down next to me at a party. And I was like, I want to I wanna find out a way where like we can have a collaboration where you're a like a bigger part of my videos, like where you're almost like a character in my videos. And the other brand just could not get it done. They were like, we're going to pass. We can't do this. And Ian was like gung ho about it. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And now we've made, I've made, I mean, over 15, 16 different videos with them where we're surprising people with tuition, cars, all kinds of things, trips. So that turned out great. And I actually got a call from that, from the person that was running the other brand um, that like passed on this whole thing. And he was like, that's one of my biggest regrets in my business like life is that that day I didn't jump on it and Ian jumped on it instead. So, yeah. so good job, Ian. Good Credit job, to Ian, Ian from Seeky. <laughs> if you could switch lives with me, would you? Like if you, could you be a YouTuber? Would you be a YouTuber rather than be on the business side no. of things? No, I would crack under the pressure. Like I see how stressed you are about trying to get like the content and the vlogs and like I have anxiety about it. And then in my very brief appearances in content, I led to about like 10 different panic attacks. So <laughs> I realized I'm not cut out for this content life. Um, I'd rather just be Ian from SeatGeek on Twitter and just clout draft off you. So like, <laughs> when you tweet you like, like your videos, scene. I'll be the first reply underneath it. Uh, trying to make some funny little joke that I get likes off of and then eventually follows. Sure. That is pretty good. <laughs> when you when you get a new job, will you be Ian from Verizon or I think that's an open question. There's to gonna that? be bidding on what that is. There's gonna be some be serious factored. negotiations. <laughs> yeah. When Ian gets married, his wife is going to become Lauren from C. <laughs> <laughs> um Ian, do I'm you have you, to the game? Ian, be honest, when you go and when you go and get tickets, yeah. is it a hundred percent of the time always SeatGeek or do you go on Ticketmaster? It's always SeatGeek. And before SeatGeek, like before you were at SeatGeek, were you using SeatGeek or was it, was there not SeatGeek yet? How, I don't how? remember a world where SeatGeek didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> SeatGeek is in my DNA. And you think you're going to be with the company forever? Yeah, forever. That's Ian from SeatGeek. Ian, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. 